The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning. Welcome to Catholic Chicago on WNDZ, 7.50 a.m. And we can also get us on YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Again, WNDZ, 7.50 a.m. Father Greg Sacco is the rector of Holyoke Cathedral. And co-host Mark Teresi, who is involved with the, as director of the 175th, involved with the Legacy Program and many other things in the uh, parish cathedral. And a longtime great friend, Mark, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Very good, very good, very good. Boy, Midnight Mass at Cathedral was beautiful. And I, packed. I was watching with, in my pajamas <laughs> on Channel 9. As I was doing the, uh, that was my 39th year in a row doing the television commentary wow. for WGN. And the Cardinal right. gave a great homily. Music was beautiful. The art environment was spectacular. And the place was packed. There wasn't an empty seat. And it's hard to believe a couple of weeks ago, we were wishing people have a very blessed Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And here we now have the Christmas season now over and move into a short period of ordinary time. And believe it or not, February 14th, Valentine's Day this year, is Ash Wednesday. I saw that. I saw that on the calendar. Amazing. So we've got a great program lined up here today on WNDZ 750 AM. We have with us, back by popular demand, three wonderful guests. Phil Bradley, the president of Nonviolence Works, Dr. Alfredi Weedham, vice president of Nonviolence Works, and Larry Campbell, the treasurer of Nonviolence Works. So to Phil and Alfredi and Larry, welcome to the program this morning. God bless all of you and thank you for being back. How are you all doing today? Very well. Great. Thank it's, you. It's amazing how the time is flying because all three of you first appeared on this program pre-COVID, mm -hmm. so going back at least four years, maybe five years, and maybe we, as a way to get into it, Phil, nonviolence works in some way is, I think, the best kept secret in Chicago with the great work that you're doing along with uh, Alfredi and with Larry. So maybe what is the history, how was it created, and when? Uh, thank you uh, again, uh, Father Greg. Uh, Nonviolence, uh, I happen to have been, been very fortunate to have been an apprentice to uh, a civil rights icon, James Bevel, who was uh, the lieutenant for Dr. King. Mm. And so I was with him uh, for six years uh, personally, and then another 20 years doing social challenges to see how nonviolence is applied. And I've come to discover that it worked very well. Uh, Several years ago, Elfrida and I were neighbors, and we happened to strike up uh, a common discussion to see that what she's doing in the academic arena and what I'm doing in the community arena could be combined as a social experiment. And she was, so she started bringing students out to the south side of Chicago to see the, the differences in culture, the differences, and see how violence in itself. And the children saw that uh, education in Chicago is a very is not pleasant. Uh, how do they learn? Uh, and so, but then how do we respond? What do we do as you see these things? So then we uh, we were looking at uh, doing trainings with the church because uh, Cardinal Supich had just got in town. And so we met him at St. Brad Church and was telling him we were going to do trainings with the church, and we have. And we was wanted to get more involved with that. And so then Larry got involved because he's part of the membership uh, with the church. And so we... Uh, we combined our forces and said, let's do a collective. Uh, let's use our influence with the church. Let's use our influence with the schools. And let's use our influence with, this, with the community to deal with uh, social change. And so one of the things that came up, though, was that the Pope sent a love letter. Go back to Valentine's Day. The Pope sent a love letter to Chicago uh, asking us to use nonviolence as a way of life. And so we have been trumpeting that. And once again, we're trying to get as many priests, get Cardinal Supich uh, in more involved with this campaign uh, of it's either nonviolence or non-existence. And we right there uh, in the urban area, in the international arena, we have to look at nonviolence as a serious alternative to violence. Now, along those lines, before we flip it over to uh, Mark and with Larry, 
is, Alfredi, when Phil said several years ago that you started bringing students down to the south side and involved with, with uh, Phil, what was in your heart that made you do it? I mean, what stirred your heart that all of a sudden said, I want to have my students from Loyola as part of this? Father Craig, Loyola requires that all <clears throat> their students participate in some kind of engaged learning activity. And having spoken with Phil about the investment, immersion in the community that he does, it occurred to me pretty quickly that students that I teach or up on the north side in, in a very beautiful um, campus and it, not as exposed to all of the real world issues that they perhaps could be. So I used my opportunity as a teacher for a course that I developed called Sociology of Violence to bring students to an area they might not be familiar with, but need to learn about. So half of this course is understanding the nature of violence and the causes of violence. The second half of the course is solutions to violence. Mm -hmm. And nonviolence consists in a major part of the solutions. And so Philip has come to my class to introduce students to the kind of training that he offers. And then we took the students to, in two cases, two different Southside high schools to meet other young people, to understand their environments better, and to offer service as, as requested. And it, for many of the students, I must say, Father Greg, it was a transformative experience. It was a real eye, exactly. probably a real eye opener. Now, yes. Larry, Larry, so the, I want to make sure people get the title of the organization many times during the show. So Nonviolence Works is the title. Correct. Describe the, one word, Mark. One word. Describe the works as a verb and a noun. Thank you. Well, you know, in terms of what we try to do is to use Jesus Christ, and Phil is so eloquent about the Sermon of the Mount. We use Gandhi and we use Dr. King as our role models of what we're trying to do to make people understand that there are eight steps to nonviolence and that um, there is a way, um, and it's certainly not pacifistic, like a lot of people think of very passive, it's not. It's actually very outgoing and engaging. And to be nonviolent, it's really, it's a lot of work. Um, but yet, this is something that um, both Phil and Alfredi have done for many, many years. And I've actually, I've been involved since my senior year in college when I took a nonviolence course on um, Gandhi and Dr. King. So as Phil mentioned, we've gone to schools, we've gone to churches, we've gone to businesses, we've gone to community leaders to try to explain that nonviolence is the way. And if we don't do this, we're going to have much further problems than we have even today. And maybe uh, two questions for all three of you, and that is, every day you pick up the newspaper, tremendous amount of violence, killings, shootings, a crime. It goes on and on and on. In the work that you do for each one of you, you're busting your tails about nonviolence works. Yet the real world we live in, it, it is violent. So begin with you, Phil. Do you have days in which you wake up and say, am I making a difference? Are we making some headway? And what gets you up in the morning to keep doing what you're doing, which I totally believe in the great work you're doing, and we need more of this. But you pick up a paper, and it just it, it never seems to end. Even on Christmas Day, the guns don't come down. Phil, your response. Uh, yeah, very good question. Uh, when we just achieved a major milestone. A, a pastor's son was killed. Uh, as a result, the, the church did a resolution around his son, and Nonviolence Works uh, joined him in this campaign, and we wind up uh, 
putting forth a ref a, a, a referendum dealing with violence that passed through the legislature uh, called House Bill 158 that also passed through the Senate and the governor just signed the bill declaring violence a public health problem and a disease. And they put $250 million into the initial rollout. So that's one of the things that nonviolence works have done recently. Uh, and like you said, and now we have to put organizations and agencies in place with this new paradigm that violence is a public health problem. Mm, exactly. It's not just no, violence when, it, when done, it affects numerous people and they have numerous byproduct effects. Uh, and we have to start to see uh, how to reel it back in. So the horse is out the barn now. However, we now have given it the, the, the correct prescription. Violence is not honorable. Violence is not necessary. Violence is not uh, uh, only means good for the right. No, violence is only not for the thought. Violence is a public health problem when anyone uses it, government or citizen. It creates trauma, okay? No matter who, you don't have the authority to, to eliminate the trauma when you use it. Right. So we have to look at violence from that scientific perspective. Now we, they are now opening up mental health facilities for the first time because there's money in the budget because it's now a disease. Uh, so we had to name it correctly. Uh, and it's affecting everybody. Uh, violence is not just a black problem. Violence is affecting everyone, and it's nationally, just, internationally. Well, and it's interesting, I won't go into detail other than our family is living with an act of violence. And, and uh, what I see is how families are impacted, maybe forever in terms of a, an act of violence. And my question would be, I was at Mercy Home for many years, worked there. They take care of young women, young men, who many of them have experienced violence in their lives. Father Close always said, and now Father Scott says, you know, we're about changed or saved lives. H how do you look at, maybe Elfrida, how do you look at the work you're doing and look at that in terms of changed or saved lives? Students that I have access to at Loyola often don't understand how violence is so personally traumatic and they don't understand that this is deep into a person's history mm -hmm. and you mentioned mark families youth who are exposed to violence usually are exposed to it from a very early age within their surroundings where they grow up the neighborhood they're in what um, peers they have and so this ha exposure of my students to their experience helps them understand how violence is a mental health problem because most people including my students come into it with the understanding oh this is a policing problem mm -hmm. the police have done all this damage which of course they have a great deal of damage out in the street but it's much beyond that. It has a much further history. So my job within my work as a teacher is to give them the opportunity to see the world in a different way, different lenses. They can put on different lenses when they take my course mm. because of the analysis that allows us to do as well as the the exposure in terms of some kind of participation that they have to make in uh, their own commitment to solving the violence problem. Yeah. And let me share this with them, uh, Phil, to follow Phil, up. Phil, 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 we need to go to a break here and then pick up and that we'll be back. Go ahead, Mark. WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago. You can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We'll be back with Phil Bradley, Larry Campbell, Alfredi Weedham, uh, Paul committed members, uh, leaders in nonviolence works. When we come back, I, I do want to talk about uh, the idea of compassion. Where does compassion fit in? Not, not only for the perpetrator, but for the victims and the residual victims uh, in acts of violence. We'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, please stay tuned.
Join Catholic Charities on Sunday, February 4th for the 2024 Divine Affair, a premier wine tasting event held at Chicago's Union League Club. Sample and purchase wines and craft beers from around the world. Attend a wine appreciation or beer tasting seminar while you enjoy gourmet hors d'oeuvres and fabulous desserts. A fantastic silent auction and raffle are included as well. All proceeds benefit Catholic Charities programs and services that help anyone in need throughout Cook and Lake Counties. To purchase Divine Affair tickets and learn about great sponsorship opportunities, visit catholiccharities.net or call 847-226-5697. That's 847-226-5697. I feel special. <laughs> I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artschicago.org slash findaschool. Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847 847- 782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. We're back, WNDZ 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, with YouTube.com slash Catholic Chicago with Phil Bradley, President, Larry Campbell, Treasurer, Alfredi Weedham, Vice President, Nonviolence Works. Phil, two things. Now, before you begin, yeah. Mark, folks, we're in this beautiful, brand new studio. It is spectacular, the work of uh, Michael and Brian and Clinton and the team. You've done a fantastic job with the beautiful, th- this is a state-of-the-art TV studio. So to all of them, Office thank of Radio you. and Television, thank you. And now you've got the floor, Mark. And it's the Francis Cardinal George Studio, so it's exactly. dedicated to Francis George. The question, Phil, so two things. One, before we got on the air, you talked about each gift that you folks bring as leader, a leadership team. Maybe you could share with our listeners what you had shared there. And then I do want to go back to that question about where does com- compassion fit into this whole um, concept of nonviolence work. So Phil, what about what gifts do your team bring to this effort? Uh, well, uh, Sarah, uh, the, one of the dynamics when you look at a problem is multifaceted and, and all institutions play a role in violence and all of them have to play a role in the solution. Uh, the church have played its role in it and they have to play a role in the solution. The government's played a role and violence, it must play a role in the solution. Mm-hmm. And so we all take a, a stand about, okay, how do the academic community have to be educated about violence and nonviolence? Because if you don't know what violence is, you can't have compassion. If you don't know what nonviolence is, you can't have compassion. And right now we have people who are so uncivil because they justify violence 
and they boo at nonviolence, but no one wanna get out of this syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I would like to share is, it's eight stages of violence. Uh, and we teach this in the class, because once again, without having knowledge, you can't have compassion. Uh, the first act of violence is self disrespect. Now, the reason why that's the first act, because when you define violence from a theological perspective, violence is to be unaware or to be or disregard that you or another is a child of God. So violence is to be unaware of your existence or to just disrespect other people's existence. Uh, and that's violence. So just on that level. But when we look at the first act of violence, how you treat yourself, no matter how people treat you, how do you treat yourself? Then the second act of violence is if you disrespect yourself, you can get into a relationship and create stage two violence, domestic violence, when one of us or both of us are disrespecting themselves. Then if they have a child in the midst, it goes to stage three violence, that the child feel abused and neglected because the adults in the environment don't have self-respect of each other and themselves and the child. Then the child hurt people, hurt people, stage four. Then the child goes out and hurt other people because they feel abused and neglected. They witness domestic violence in some form or witness their own parents disrespecting themselves and other people. Now those are personal acts. No one can tell you how to treat yourself until you break the law. Mm -hmm. No one can tell you how to treat your wife until you break the law. No one can tell you how to treat your children until you break the law. And can't nobody tell you what you can tell your children until their actions break the law. Now those are the personal acts. The social dynamics come in with hurt people, hurt people, then there's a counter response. It's like, you stepped on my foot, now I'm gonna shoot you. Now that's stage five. That's called murder. Now it's become social. Murder is a social problem. Murder is not a personal problem. It becomes social now. Now, when murder then goes to stage six, capital punishment. The citizen kills the citizen. Now the state can kill the citizen. Then it goes to stage uh, six, where if you can kill your own citizens, you can kill other citizens of the world and call that war. Then it goes to stage seven, stage eight called genocide. Now, we are living that right now in local communities, there's self-disrespect, domestic violence, abuse, and neglect, and violence. On a social level, we see murder, capital punishment, and they've been letting a whole bunch of people out of jail who they falsely arrested, who hit them on death row so much for capital punishment. War and genocide. Now, the difference between war and genocide, I was sharing with Dr. Weedham, is a matter of county. And war is a nice, tidy count. They count the bullets, they count the dead, they count the missing, they count the wounded, tidily. But as soon as they lose count, they stop the count, don't count, it goes into genocide. Mm -hmm. And even as we look over in the Middle East, for several weeks, they were doing a nice, tidy, tidy count, and now they losing count. Mm -hmm. They started a war, so justified, it was a necessary evil, and now we see it after three weeks, it's unnecessary and it's evil. And if we were to just start it with, violence is unnecessary and evil, we wouldn't even be in that situation. So you know, in all honesty, so Phil, it is so exploded, it's like the rippling effect, like you're throwing a pebble into the water and it ripples out, ripples out, ripples out. It's become a gigantic tsunami. Um, it's just unbelievable. That was a tremendous summary of the eight steps of violence, Phil. It, it, it was your whole program in a nutshell. Now, maybe for a moment, Larry, is you're so involved with Phil and Alfredi in this area. What gets you out of bed in the morning to keep doing what you're doing in this area, knowing that sometimes, again, as I said earlier, we, you know, we look at the newspaper, what's happening locally, nationally, on a world level, Middle East, in the uh, uh, Israeli area, in uh, Russia, Ukraine, what gets you out of bed to keep doing what you're doing? You know, one of the things, Father Greg, that I can say for myself, as well as Phil, as well as Alfredi, we are mission driven. Um, the Lord has given us this assignment, and our enthusiasm is because He allows us to try to help people 
without that faith, I, I think it would be much more difficult because you say there's a lot of issues going on right now. And sometimes it's frustrating. Um, but, you know, you mentioned the, the, um, the pebble in the water. We look at everyone that we are able to have take a class of ours that they only help themselves, but it ripples out in terms of their family, their community, their work, their church. And if I could briefly just say, you know, you're right, Phil gave us a great example of, of the eight steps. We are starting training on January 20th of this year at Our Lady of Peace, which is on 78th and Jeffries. Um, people can register. Uh, the course is called Mastering the Art and Science of Nonviolence. And if you go to Nonviolence Works Chicago, all one word, dot org, uh, there is a button to register. So nonviolenceworks.org, one word to register. Is right. there a cost involved, Phil? I mean, uh, uh, Larry, a cost? Uh, there is a cost, but, you know, it's a situation that if someone can't afford it, we're certainly going to allow them to come to class. We're also um, asking people if they don't want to come themselves, they can sponsor someone else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are a, a, a nonprofit, and as a result, um, we unfortunately do have some expenses, and therefore, um, anybody that wants to donate to us, there's also a donation button on our website. Good. Father Greg and I were involved for many year, all the years that the McLaughlin Foundation uh, was around, and the McLaughlin Foundation funded peace circles uh, at um, St. Pius, and, and those were circles of uh, young people in the school, and they talked about violence. And I remember one of the questions they asked this circle of probably 20 kids: anybody is anybody here been touched? Um, by any kind of a, a violence in terms of shooting. 19 of the 20 kids said yes. In some way, they have been impacted through their family, friends, neighborhood, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe, Alfredi, first, uh, what's out there for folks that are dealing with the issue of violence directly in their life? And they, they want to be compassionate, but they also want to, they want to heal from what's going on in their life. Are, 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 do you work with those folks or are there places where people can go to get some counseling, some nourishment, especially since Phil talked about and Elfrida, you talked about, all three of you talked about it being mental health. There's a mental health issue here. So you're dealing with someone's history that was a violent history. But if you're not, if you didn't grow up in that environment, how do you get help to help understand and deal with that in your life let me just step in here for a second because we do home visits with cps uh as a current dynamic and like you just said very well uh, i'm with a family who witnessed their father killed in front of them oh wow uh, right killed right in front of them seven children watch wow. witness wow. this wow. and the the, the, the young people are now getting um mental health services but two of the young men are struggling very hard because all they have is revenge in their heart. Yes, exactly. But, so we, so then I looked at what do the mother needs. When I looked into the house, they had no furniture, they had nothing. Hmm. And so I immediately reached out to our uh, church representative, Larry Campbell, and he gave me Catholic Charities number. I did a connection with them because he was going to help me with furniture, clothing. I worked with the school to get them a bus pass. And so violence is like I said, it's right at is right at the ground level, but it's what services are there to help with the healing. And you app and that's where House Bill 158 comes. We for a long time they closed mental health facilities, they closed a lot of social services, and it escalated the violence. And so the Illinois Health Reform Bill is is there just for that. And we need to beat the drum on that so people have access to those resources for mental health service, for family services. But yeah, uh, it's, it's a desert out there even for that. Right. And so we have to uh, get more resources to the local level to help families who are dealing with trauma. And it's happening every day, as you know. And before we uh, bring it to Alfredi, before we bring it to Alfredi. One second, I'm sorry, Father Greg. Uh, I have a visit at the hospital for 
some treatment I have to take. I need to leave right now. So again, thank you, Father Greg. Thank you, Mark. Oh, you're welcome. Happy New Year. God bless Happy you. New thank New you, Larry Campbell, for joining us. I know that uh, Phil and Alfredi will stay on, but God bless you, Larry. Our prayers are with you. Yes. Before we get to Alfredi, Mark, take us to break. Uh, okay, WNDZ 750 AM, Catholic Chicago. You can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Alfredi, when we come back, if you could, as an educator but a compassionate friend in this involvement, uh, help us understand what is out there to educate folks who are connected to acts of violence and 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 that it's impacted their families. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please Community is core to Catholic Charities founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarian fund or call 312-534-7959. The Cemetery Ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 44 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic cemeteries willing to help you in your time of loss. Call 708-449-6100 or visit catholiccemeterychicago.org. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837. You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. We're back, WNDZ, 7.50 a.m., Catholic Chicago. You go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're with Phil Bradley, President, Alfredi Weedham, Dr. Alfredi Weedham, Vice President of Nonviolence Works. Larry Campbell, Treasurer, had to leave. He had a, a special medical appointment. We're hoping and praying for his healing. Alfredi, uh, before the break, I was talking about, and, and Phil, you lined up so clearly those eight steps and and I will tell you, extremely accurate in terms of each of those steps that you... Spot on. Spot on in terms of some of what our family is dealing with. Alfredi, what about, as, you, as, as an educator, but also as that compassionate person you are involved in this effort, uh, where can people who are not fringe, but on the res, residual part of a violent act, where can they talk about it or get help? I mean, are there is it like an is there a narcotics of you know the special self help groups for people that you know are addicted you know? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mark. Can I just bring uh, um, to your attention how comprehensive 
you already know this, I'm sure, how comprehensive it is, how, how, how comprehensive services are needed in order to address yes. violence at the root cause and you know, some of the reverberations of that in people's lives, different experiences. And so it, it's important that, that programs not be band-aids, mm -hmm. that they not be isolated from one another, that they not be short-term solutions that maybe works for a month or two and then, and then there's no follow-up. It really needs to be a much broader effort in which a whole neighborhood is invested in protecting the people within that neighborhood as a first, you know, as a first step um, to um, then develop a, a, a com this kind of comprehensive approach. We have what's called the nonviolent zone strategy in which one single neighborhood like South Shore or any of the other community areas in Chicago will be uh, addressed through the six major social institutions that are present in every, uh, in every um, neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. The family, the school, the church, the criminal justice, uh, pol politicians, um, the medical uh, arena, so that everybody will be ad addressed to learn how to apply nonviolence in each of their arenas. So what does nonviolent policing look like? What does a nonviolent school look like? What does a nonviolent medical clinic look like? What does a nonviolent family look like? And as a result of being able to address this comprehensively, more organizations can be brought in who can address individual people's people in need. Um, there are domestic violence programs in many parishes that Father Chuck Dom has developed. There uh, in the South Shore area, the Claritian Associates, um, who are Catholic affiliated, provides mental health services. Uh, the Lost Boys organization in South Shore uh, brings in youth to address their individual issues. So. It, ha it can't just be, oh, call this number and you know, you'll be taken care mm -hmm. of. It has to be systemic. It has to be endemic. The whole neighborhood has to be addressed so that people can feel like they're living in a safe place. You know, maybe before um, we bring you back to uh, Phil, the very fact that, uh, Alfreda, you are in the classroom at Lyle University, is there a story you can maybe share of one of your students that by witnessing the violence in a first-hand way so transformed his or her life that the student just stands out in your mind. There's someone who had maybe been raised in a suburb, and you talked about earlier not being aware or personally connected with violence, that was so touched by your course or a session or an experience that you, you just you saw a transformation in action in all the years you've been teaching. Thank you, Father Greg. The student that comes to mind immediately is a young man who said to me after the class was over, running across him uh, accidentally on campus, he says, oh, Dr. Weedham, you know, Phil Bradley really did a number on me. Oh, and wow. he explained how he estranged he was from one of his, well, one of his brothers that he hasn't spoken to in years. And as you recall, Phil said, the beginning of understanding violence and is recognizing your self-disrespect and disrespect for other people. So he had been changed to actually open his heart, see his world differently. And his first, the first thing he did was reach out to his brother who lived in another state and actually go visit him and wow. because he hasn't seen him in so many years. Now, that's so, an incredible story. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal. I mean, talk about you know God, the Spirit of the Lord working in action through Phil at that moment. That's a tremendous story. And I'm sure, Alfredo, you have story after story after story 
Uh, Mark, you have the floor. Well, I think you've you've talked about a story that echoes Father Close, Father Scott at Mercy Home changed or saved lives. They were not mm-hmm. not only saved but changed, and not only the gentleman that went to go see the brother, but the brother's life too. Exactly, and that's the gospel. That's the mm-hmm. gospel in terms of forgiveness, Phil. As you look at that uh, question about changed or saved lives, what about in your ministry and your movement? Does something come to mind? In ter- that, that story about you working with that family is amazing to me. Just, just how do you, the fortitude you have and the energy just to keep walking into those situations and trying to be a healer, uh, that wounded healer, you know? And I appreciate that. Uh, one thing, it's... Uh, I get up every day with the intent to do something positive or uh, to get an outcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember most of my successes because that's all I was trying to do. What, what stands out is when I did not achieve certain things. Uh, what did I not say to make a difference? And I go back to the drawing board. Uh, but I try to work on uh, being a part you know, Father used me to be uh, a tool for you today. And he and he always finds something for me to do. Uh, there's plenty of stuff to do. But one thing, uh, but to go back to what you were saying, uh, brother, if I ask you how many steps is it to NA or AA, you would say what? Twelve. Yeah. Well, if I say how many steps is it to nonviolence? According to you, eight. Now we know because you shared now, it no, with right, us. Right. It's eight steps. Now we know how to get people off drugs. We know how to get people off alcohol. Well, we don't know how to get people to be nonviolent because yeah. if you don't know the steps, you can't do it. Right, true. You have to be taught the steps, okay? So if you have an addiction to violence, you have to be, go to a nonviolent class. If you have addiction to drugs, you got to go to a drug class. Yeah. But the problem is we don't teach nonviolence. Uh, violence pays. Violence is profitable. They will give you $60 billion to go kill, but don't get no money to go heal. Uh, yeah. That's the that's the social dynamic we in. They will go make money right now to, for bullets and blood, and call it honorable. And ask, how do you help immigrants? How you help the needy? How you help the hungry? We don't have no money for that. Well, that's violence too. Sure, now, because there's, there's now, millions of dollars in drugs, in right. sex we trade. Money to kill, yes. but we don't have money to heal. Exactly. And if you don't. If can't heal people, you need to stop killing people. You know what I mean? If you don't have money for the veterans when they come back from war, stop sending them off to war. Exactly. Well, yeah. We're going to take a little break. Great point. That, that's a ter- tremendous point because it challenges each one of us exactly. to think through where are we coming from. We have money to kill but no money to heal. Yeah. WNDZ 750 AM, Catholic Chicago. You can go to YouTube dot com slash catholic chicago we'll be back with phil bradley president Alfred, dr well alfredi weedham vice president nonviolence works let's make sure the next part of our show we talk a little bit more about the mastering the art of science and nonviolence, which is going to be saturday january 20th between 10 and 2 at our lady of peace that could be a first step for many folks in terms of understanding this topic and how to move toward those eight steps Uh, of understanding the eight steps, but also move toward healing. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States, and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219.
year 44 for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed, what, what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach, apply today at artschicago.org slash schooljobs. We are hiring. Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Chicago is looking for mission-driven individuals who want to help make a positive difference in the lives of people in need throughout Cook and Lake Counties. Be part of a diverse, talented team of professionals in the largest human services organization in the Midwest. We are dedicated to helping people chart a more stable, happier future for themselves, and we accompany anyone in need, regardless of faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. Competitive salaries and generous benefits add to the satisfaction you'll have every day knowing that you're helping us amplify our impact in Chicago. To see our list of employment opportunities, visit catholiccharities.net. We're back, WNDZ 750M, Catholic Chicago. You go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Father Greg Sackowitz with Mark Tracy here. Father Greg, you have a question for our guests, for Phil Bradley and Elfriede Weedham? Yeah, here's a question that is, uh, and just listening to both of you and also Larry earlier, is we've had a guest on our program some time ago. Uh, who, he teaches at St. Ignatius College Prep, and he does a whole <coughs> class on listening. He said, we have speech yes. 101. We have debate, all these ways to learn how to be a better speech communicator, but no classes on listening. The same thing holds here true. When you talk about, um, Phil, in terms of we have money, not money, but programs for AA, programs for sex addiction. We don't have any programs on non-violence I just find that fascinating. So that how do you get the word out to have more programs or classes like this? Because we take for granted listening, but that's a gift. We take for granted nonviolence, but we are so, so far from it. It has to be taught. Why is it not happening more than it's happening right now? Well, now, a very good question, Father Greg. Uh, one of the things, and I can't take credit for it, nonviolence uh, comes from Jesus Christ. Uh, non Jesus Christ is nonviolent. Uh, he's the nonviolent Jesus uh, in his nonviolent ways. And so you have to start from his baseline uh, to even come to that other conclusion. Uh, nonviolence is he's the truth, the way, and the light. Uh, that's what nonviolence is. It's the truth. It's the way. It's the light. And without accepting, uh, not so much accepting Christ, but accepting the fact that nonviolence can be a way of life. Uh, I talk to parents sometimes and I say, stop beating your kids. Well, how can I be a parent if I can't beat my kids? Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> right? well, no, you don't have to beat your kids to be a parent. See, we keep thinking you have to use force to, to make right, uh, even in your own home. No, you don't. Uh, you can be a loving, kind soul and get a good outcome. Uh, uh, Jesus did it. And see, and Jesus practiced these steps. Jesus would come, step one, he made an observation. He come and make an observation. Step two, he does an investigation. He asks questions. Go back to listening. Step three, he checks his motivation, purification. He always checked his heart. As he ex had exchanged it with people, he would go meditate on his heart. He would then come back and do step four, make a recommendation. 
He, when people couldn't hear his recommendation, he would do step five. He would start educating people. When, when the education didn't work, he would start demonstrating himself how it's done. Step six. Then, then a confrontation happened. Step seven. Then he did step eight called reconcile. Jesus Christ conquered evil and death. If you're going to conquer evil and death, you have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. And as Christians, it is our duty. It's not the duty of the Muslim to teach Jesus Christ. It's not the duty of the Jews to teach Jesus Christ. It's not the duty of the Hindus to teach Jesus Christ. It's the duty of the Christians to teach Jesus Christ. And so we have to be mindful that Jesus is the architect. And Gandhi became a student of truth. He, as a Hindu, he followed his truth. He didn't become a Christian. He followed the truth of Christ. And it then freed those people. And then King followed Gandhi, and he knew about Christianity, but he was in the midst of segregation with Christianity. But then he had to take uh, Jesus' teachings, and he got up off the back of the bus, into the war in Vietnam. And so we write there again. So we have to see that the, that Jesus' teachings uh, in the church really is, is at a great place right now to take the lead on this, because it's so needed. Jesus' voice is that, me is that medium discussion. How we love everybody. How you love your enemy. How you demonstrate that. Not just say it. Some people can't even say it. Love your enemy. Man, get out of here. Who does that? Christians must do that. Okay? Good point. El Elfrey, I had a question yeah. related to, to what Phil's talking about. Two, I'll phrase it two different ways. One would be, uh, how has been uh, being involved with nonviolence works? How has that impacted your life in terms of a change? But the other question, maybe in a more flippant way, would be: Are you ever glad you met Phil Bradley in terms of <laughs> how, how this is moving you forward? <laughs> oh, Frida. Yes. Well, she's, she's thinking about she's, being a she diplomat. Was stunned into silence. <laughs> right. Right. That, that, the, the, the last question is a toughie. Go ahead. <laughs> you can't wait to hear your answer. Well, as an academic, I applied the tools of academe, research, teaching, uh, and reflection to the study of nonviolence. And I, I have to say that before I met Phil, and we um, dreamed up this organization, Nonviolence Works Chicago, and, and globally, actually, uh, we, I was not doing that. Mm -hmm. I was not doing that. I, I was, uh, I'm a sociologist of religion, my initial training. I am very much involved in urban sociology, understanding urban environment. There's a number of other courses that I teach on communities and the life course and so on, but I didn't focus on the, the real, um, the underlying issues that have kept people apart. And uh, a whole, the whole focus of sociology is to, is to create social change so that we can, as I tell my students, create a better world mm -hmm. than the one that that is currently present, um, but but I uh, didn't understand how fundamental the problem of violence is in all the other issues that I was interested in, that I was exploring, and I was doing my research on, and writing on, and so on. So so now I have shifted my focus to become a, a scholar of the connection between religion and violence yeah. and my current research agenda is to understand in what ways if so can faith-based organizations address the problem of violence and are is their solution more effective than any uh, solution from a secular organization we don't have the research on that mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the documented evidence on that and the so last go that right for you. is really my contribution as an academic. Beautiful. In the last few minutes, uh, Phil, uh, you are a nonprofit organization. How can people make a gift or donation? How do they do that? 
Well, they can uh, donate, uh, uh, go on, on, on our website uh, and see some of the writings that we've done, see some of the activities we've done, uh, and and donate. Uh, one thing I say to people, even if you don't agree with nonviolence, but agree that violence needs to stop, don't hate, okay? Yeah, uh, you may not agree with nonviolence, but if you agree that violence needs to stop, please donate, because that's what we're working on. But one of the things, with, even with this training, uh, we're asking people to sponsor students uh, in the, uh, the donation is $300. Uh, we're trying to get a class of 30 people to start being the foundation uh, training group for this particular area mm -hmm. uh, so we can commandeer other resources because you have to see people in action. So, uh, one thing that Larry says to me, Bill, I don't want to have a training where it's just three people. I know you would do it anyway. I said, Larry, you're right. I don't care if it's just one. One is better than none. But I was shooting for 30. Uh, we want to get all of them to get sponsorship from a person. Uh, because you have to invest in the alternative. I'll put your money where your mouth is. Now let's like get said, let, let's just, violence, but agree to stop violence. I want to make sure we get in mastering the art and science of nonviolence. It starts Saturday, January twentieth, between ten and two. It's at Our Lady of Peace, seventy eight fifty one South Jeffrey Boulevard. Now, Phil, it says on my notes here, if people have questions, they can be directed to you. Do you want to give them your phone number, please? Yes, my number is 773-301-1792. Then number once, once again, again Phil. 3301-1792. And to make a donation would be to non- Mark, yes. oh, go ahead. if I may, just briefly, it will be five sessions. Okay. So right, right. It, it is an investment, five succeeding Saturdays, beginning January the 20th. It's a 20-hour training, right? 20-hour training. Okay, 20-hour yeah. training. So five successive Saturdays at Our Lady of Peace. Again, to make a donation would be going to non- Violenceworks.com. Is that the, correct? Our website is nonviolenceworkschicago.org. Okay, so nonviolenceworkschicago.org. And you know, we need the program to a close. We want to thank in a very special way this morning Phil Bradley, the president of Nonviolence Works, Dr. Alfredi Weedham, vice president of Nonviolence Works. Uh, Phil and Alfredi, you've done a fabulous job along with Larry, who's on before. God bless you with the great yes. work you're doing. Um, it's, it's rooted in Jesus Christ as Christians, followers of the way of the cross. It's a tough task, but we're not alone because the Lord is with us. I want to thank in a very special way co-host Mark Teresi, great works sure. of our producer engineers, which would be Michael May and Clint Cottrell. To our listeners, may God bless all of you and have a great week and blessings and joy and health in the new year. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.